Good, good, good to see you guys. I have a quick question for all of you guys that just came out to the top of my head. Um, I just want to see a show of hands. I'm not making you guys do anything crazy or come up here. But raise your hand if you started coming to Good News Church since 2015, since this year. Wow, that, that was pretty good. Give yourself, church, let's give them a round of applause real quick. So I want to open up with uh, John, John 3, verse 12. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe me if I tell you about heavenly things? A while back, our brother uh, Nazar shared a word about how he felt when people were evangelizing to him, um, he felt like they were trying to sell him something. And when he uh, shared this, um, I could relate to this experience because I had a similar experience to his. Um, and I know when I, when I share it, a lot of you have probably had this experience before too. Um, it kind of goes something like this, you know, it's Saturday afternoon, you're sitting down watching TV, and all of a sudden you hear a knock on your door. You go and check through the people. Or if you're Mexican like me, we check through windows. <laughs> so, you know, we're checking, and then all of a sudden this happens. Shh, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet, everybody. Turn the TV off, t- stop moving, be quiet. Everyone's freaking out, what's going on? Carlitos, who is it? Is it La Migra? No. It's the church people. <laughs> now, I mean, seriously, even the dog, the dog's not even potty trained, but he's trained that when he hears the church people, he just freezes, like, <laughs> doesn't even move or nothing. So, so why at this reaction? Why acting like this? Well, if you haven't ha- had this experience yet, or even if you, had, if, if you have, you know what I'm talking about. This first encounter with these church people. You know, you're sitting down watching TV. You hear a knock on your door. And you go open it. Across the door is two people who are looking sharp, fresh in their suits, holding the Bible. And they introduce themselves. And they're like, can we ask you a few questions? Sure, why not? And this is where it all goes downhill. <laughs> Have you been saved? Do you believe Jesus died on the cross for you? If I was to kill you right now, would you go to heaven or hell? And you're like, whoa, man, chill, you know, like. It's not every day you get asked those questions. So right away, you put a, a defensive, invisible defensive shield, a defensive invisible guard. So now there's not good communication with them, but there's no connection whatsoever. And so they keep talking and talking, and then you're being nice. You're still there, but you're slowly trying to push them away and close the door. You're like, hey, you know, I would really like to keep talking to you right now, but I'm on the phone right now with Donald Trump. We're trying to get this campaign settled. And, you know, they keep talking and talking, and you're like, oh, man, you know, until you, know, you finally get Right when you close the door, and everything they said went in one ear, not the other. And like I said before, there's a lot of ways to evangelize. You don't have to always go exactly directly and quoting the Bible. A while back, I went to Gold's Gym, and there was a guy in front of the door, and he stopped me before I went in and gave me a flyer. He's like, hey, tonight we're opening our new church, and, and we would like to come, have everyone to come and check it out. You know, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I started checking out the flyer. He asked me. Do you go to church? And I was like, yeah, I go to Good News Church, Hungry Generation, and Pasco. He's like, wow, you know, that's pretty cool. And then I see him pull out his little uh, pocket Bible. He's like, let me tell you something. Let me read you something. I was like, oh, here we go. Here we go again. But now it's different. You know, now I have something to share. I don't run away like I used to. And he started um, quoting the Bible. like, John says this in this chapter, this and that. And I was like, yeah, you know, that's right. But honestly, in the back of my head, I didn't know the message behind that verse. But I was agreeing with him, you know, because I believe in the Bible. And then I started sharing my, my, my testimony. I was like, you know, God set me free from drugs. Every time, ever since I set, got saved, you know, my life has changed. He's like, wow, that's amazing. That's encouraging. But Moses says this and this, this and that. I was like, yeah, that, that's right. But I honestly still didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> so, you know, I, I kept sharing my experience. Yeah, you know, positive changes happened in my life. He's like, wow, that's amazing to hear. That's good. But Moses says this and this, and I was like, in the back of my head, I was about to be like, dude, I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, I read the Bible, but I haven't got to that chapter yet. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> nah, that's a true story, though. I'm serious. <laughs> and and uh, in these situations, what happens a lot is that you're up here sitting tall and nice in, in your horse, in your horse of knowledge, trying to connect with someone who's down there on ground level. And first of all, there's a lot of space where there's no connection. What you should do is you should get down because you've been in ground level before. Connect with that person and then take them up, pick them up to your level. Amen? Amen. 
you see, you see, people, people want to know your why, not your what. They want to know why you're reading the Bible, why you're coming to church, why you gave your life to Jesus, why are you going to home group. Not what, yeah, man, you know, I started reading the Bible, I started going to church, I started going to home group, you know, this and that. I was like, cool story, bro, how's that going to help me? They want to know why you're doing it, why should they follow your steps, and why is that going to change their life and their situation? So I encourage you, you know, when you guys go out and evangelize, you know, get off, get off your horse of Christianese. Go down there at ground level. Connect with that person. Pick them up. Tell them your why. Why are you doing this? Not your what. Get personal with them. Um, get, get personal with them of, of how God changed your life. And, and because of this, well, what's going to happen, and I know it and you know it and we know it. By the end of the year, by the end of 2015, we got six more months when I ask the same question I did in the beginning, the number of hands that are going that that to be raised is not only going to double, but they're going to triple and they're, they're going to quadruple. Amen? Amen. So I, I, hope, I hope you guys got something good out of this message, and I encourage you guys to go out and share the word. With that being said, help me welcome someone.